hold me accountable for the crime of being here. Apparently, I wrote to them, can be here at 11 August at 11 o'clock, instead of 11 August 10 o'clock. <laughs> So, so we will start without them, and they will join us hopefully before the guest speaker speaks, and uh, we, will, we will get to hear their music. So you get to see the national anthem with me. There was a gentleman who wanted to hear me sing. You, you get your wish today. Um, the deputy vice chancellor in teaching and learning, um, Prof. Matachi, uh, deputy vice chancellor in um, research, innovation, partnerships, Prof. Singh, the executive dean of the faculty of agriculture, and the other, we have the other executive deans here as well, the directors, the head of departments, the senior students uh, that are here, staff, academic and support staff, and the, all the um, students in the School of Agriculture and students in all other schools, good morning. The guests that are visiting us today, the guests that are coming to listen and grace this occasion, um, that will be introduced at the proper moment, good morning to all of you as well. Um, we are going to start with our program. Um, I, I am honored to uh, today come and listen to this guest. This is our ninth time we are listening to a guest that speaks to the most important field in our faculty, in our university, in the country. In fact, globally, with 60 million mouths to feed in South Africa, more than 60 million, and just about 30,000 30, 30, farmers, commercial farmers in the country. Um, the only demise any country can have if it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have enough food to feed the nation and the food uh, has to come from somewhere else. That can be the only downfall, the major downfall of any country. And unlike any other country, South Africa is among the best world, um, highly producing, um, agricultural, rich areas, fertile soil, fertile land, people passionate about farming, and we are here today to talk about that. And um, hopefully today we'll learn a lot from mainly protecting our sector, protecting our agricultural produce, and protecting the whole sector of agricultural production. We are here, papers are here because somebody went to the farm to farm, something and we have paper we are here we came today we are about to listen to the lecture because someone produced food that we ate and during lunch you are going to have food again uh, whatever salary you're going to end at the, at the end of the month you are going to buy guess again food so it is the most important lesson we're going to have today so let us gear up and enjoy today's lecture, and we will open the proceedings um, as we normally would with the choir here, but with the choir not here, shall we rise and sing the national anthem of our country.
through thick and thin, as it were. For those who may not be aware, Archbishop Makoba is a former student of this university. And we are highly grateful that he has not forgotten his roots. That is why he thought that it is much better for the Makoba Trust to support this university in its endeavors, especially when it comes to programs that offer uh, agricultural programs across the board. This is an apt choice because since creation, as Prof. Matsimakela also said, humanity and agriculture have been inseparable. And as Prof. Matsimakela said, we as humanity, we cannot exist without agriculture. Think of the cattle, think of the milk, think uh, uh, of the eggs that some of you had today as part of your breakfast. Uh, think, in fact, of everything. When you go to town to buy, uh, you can't come back without having visited uh, some stores that sell food. And I know a relative of mine was very happy uh, on Women's Day, not so long ago, because she was invited to go to a restaurant where uh, the husband bought her uh, food. And that strengthened their relationship. <laughs> Which then means indeed, we cannot do without food. We cannot do without agriculture. We are therefore highly thankful uh, to the Archbishop for choosing this field of study so that we as a university in the end can also play a major role in producing food for the country and even for export purposes. Well, I'm not here to give a long speech, but also to acknowledge and recognize the presence of the guest speaker. As I said, we seated close to me, uh, Professor Marshall. He's a son of the soil. In Sesotho, we say Kimwanawamu. So he knows the country in and out. He's one of, the, uh, of our experts and renowned academics uh, in the country and even internationally especially when it comes to the field of nematodes, uh, where he deals with the protection uh, of plants and other related aspects. And I trust he will be introduced formally later um, as the program continues. So in a nutshell, all of you uh, feel, at home, feel welcome and uh, we are involved by your presence. And later, of course, there will be a session uh, for questions and answers. Um, we would welcome such questions because we are in academia. And as you know, you become stronger by posing questions and also receiving answers. With these very few words, colleagues, once again, on behalf of Professor Mohalo, welcome to the university and this function. And I trust you will enjoy the discussions. I thank you. Thank you, Prof. I think now everybody is feeling welcome. I think everybody is geared up to listen to the to the guest speaker, to participate, to contribute. Um, I did promise Prof that uh, whenever the choir comes, regardless of my misinformation of, of representing what is happening today to them, 
before the guest speaker, before Prof speaks, I will let the choir sing at least something short. Um, but while the choir is presenting to sing something, uh, I really want to appreciate what is happening today and what has been happening for the previous nine lectures, including today's lecture. Um, reminds me of a story of a farmer who owned a big wine uh, um, crop, big cornfields, big, big wine farms. There's this particular farm fair, that competition that he always entered, and it was about maize. And um, he always entered every year, he always born every year. But there was something interesting about him. Every year, when the um, sowing season starts, he shares his seeds with all his neighbors, his best seeds with all his neighbors. So one of the years, the reporter went to him and said, uh, you, you really have to tell us what is, what is happening here. Aren't you scared that the competitors will outcompete you if you keep on sharing the best seeds with your competitors? He sat down for a while and said, you know, let me tell you something. If, if I, what happens is every season when we sow the seeds and um, before it is time to harvest, there's always a time for pollination. And that's the time for strong winds. Now, if you can imagine if the strong winds are blowing all the seeds all over the place, and I land with the bad seeds from one of the neighbors, then I will grow bad crop. So I feed all my neighbors with the best seeds, so that every time the harvest comes, I know I always have the best. And I hope that is what, that is what Prof is going to do with us today. Share with us his best, and then we all contribute to the better livelihood of our country. Choir, Please share with us, with us your best as well. Thank you. 
course, when all else is failing, when all else is hard, when all else is seemingly impossible to achieve, we call for divine intervention. That is the main theme of the song, the main message from the song. That is what they were singing about. And if you watch the proceedings in Cape Town about the, the unrest that passed on with five lives, and um, earlier on I was commending the arch for the divine intervention they called, and yesterday, last night, we heard that the, the strike has been ended. And uh, we really sent congratulations to him and his team for the divine intervention they called, and the unrest has truly ended. Thank you, Kuala. Divine intervention will come to us, and hopefully we'll have a wonderful lecture. I will now uh, call upon the person who will then introduce to us the, the guest speaker, and that will be none other than our host, the person who has made all this possible. Um, I'll pass over to the Archbishop Makoba to then introduce to us our guest speaker. Experience in agriculture 
has a total of 10 years born experience in agriculture, four years at the South African County Bar and Technology Agency, and six years at the Agricultural Research Council, serving in research, technology transfer, and development committees, human capital, and remuneration committee, and ethics and governance committee, where he honed his leadership skills in the boardroom and a total of 30 years in skills development. We are so proud of you, uh, Prof. And, um, and I can go on and on, but let me just continue just briefly again. In addition to skills development within the university, through supervision of postgraduate students, Patu, along with his partners in the provincial and national departments of agriculture, those from Agricultural Research Council, and, and 15 years collaboration with the then Belgium Inter-University Council, Patu has deliberately focused on promoting the rural livelihoods among the marginalized groups in rural areas to excel in farm practices. So we couldn't have chosen a better qualified person to address us on this topic. So the focus, his focus has been on youth, people with disability, women and the elderly, passionate farmers through technology and skills transfer in order to ensure their transition from sustainable subsistence to the main farming, sustainable farming platforms. In short, Professor Mashila and his research partners developed a total of 10 technologies used in the development of rural livelihoods. Prof, we are honored that you are the guest speaker for this year. We look forward to your, your input and the robust engagement by those that will listen to you. Thank you. Please join me in giving Prof a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Prof. Michel. This grace, thank you very much. In the mainstream PhD program, we have attempted. Because they come here 90% average. And then our admission requirement says about 60%. We admit 